this idea of having a relationship with a friend who is a narcissist mm -hmm. is really confusing to me mm -hmm. because why why be friends with a narcissist? Well, many times you didn't set out that way, right? So you got to remember, friendships are to me, friendships are one of the most understu understudied, interesting, impactful human relationships we have. They don't ascribe to any of the usual rules. These are people we choose. Mm -hmm. We can have more than one of them. Mm -hmm. They can cycle in and out of our lives. We can go two years without speaking to them and pick up where we left off. An intimate partnership wouldn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Typically, a family, mem uh, family member wouldn't work like that. There's a resilience and a durability to friendships that we don't see in other human relationships. They're often the healthiest space a lot of people find themselves in because they uh, people often have more clarity of judgment with their friends than they do with intimate partners because sometimes those bad choices come from like sort of intergenerational family of origin issues friendships tend to be cleaner but friendships are also interesting in that odds are you didn't meet your husband or girlfriend or boyfriend when you were 6 right. you might have friends around since childhood you might have gone to high school That's together true. You, you may have friends you meet, you know, last week, your friends you meet when you're 70, you know, so they can insert into your lives in many different places and in different ways. You meet friends in school, college, job, military, um, because they're, they're uh, parents to your, your kids' friends, mm -hmm. you know, so your, your partner's friends. So there's a lot of different ways they come into our life too. And what's tricky with friendships is that we often, again, are a bit more forgiving and easygoing because it's not as high stakes. So if your friend is being a jerk, you might kind of be like, you're being a jerk. You know, like I, and then you may not have to see them again. You're like, ah, oh, I right. can't be bothered. You yeah. know, it doesn't have the high stakes impact of an yeah, intimate It's almost partner. like their narcissistic level is tolerable in the increments yeah. that you're seeing your yeah. friend. Where a lot of narcissistic friendships get unearthed is if they become your roommate, or you travel with them. Oh, yeah. Those are two really revelatory kinds of moments because it's one thing where you're out for drinks and they're kind of being a bit mean and judgy. Right. That's one thing. It's quite another when it's day in and day out, or you're in the intense, like you know, on a trip and there's lots of decisions to be made and it's unfamiliar. There's a lot of stress around. That's often where the test happens. Also, life isn't uniform. Our lives evolve and develop. One person may get married, one may not. One may mm -hmm. move to another country, one may stay put. One may get a high paying job, one person may get stuck. Really healthy friendships can tolerate all those ebbs and flows, but we do leave people along the way. Once we perhaps have kids, mm -hmm. we may not feel as, as much affinity maybe with ch uh, childless friends. I don't agree with that. I think my, my friends without kids, I feel as connected to them as mm -hmm. others, but not everyone feels that way. All of that said, that I think that there's a different tolerance for it, but until that pressure gets on. And then people are saying, this is terrible. The other place friendships get tested and the narcissism may emerge is when you really need something significant from the friendship. Oh, man. You're going through something hard. Maybe someone dies, maybe you're going through a difficult divorce, or your partner cheats on you, or your child becomes sick, something. You need someone who's just something more than a drinking buddy. And it's not unusual then for a narcissistic friend to say, like, too much information, you know? And you'll say, what are you saying? Like, I walked you through your stuff and I'm asking you to please listen to me. And they'll say, yeah, I don't do the listening thing. And all their superficial fun over the years you start to, to see it what it for what it was. You know, this just happened to a friend of mine. Mm. He decided to get sober, and one of his friends goes, just to his face, I, I don't think we can be friends anymore. And he goes, why? He goes, ah, drinking's a big part of my life. And then hasn't talked to him since. There you go. So now, I mean, that is a, to me, was it? Is you have NPD, who the heck knows, but that to me, the lack of empathy, right. the entitlement, the superficiality, the lack of self-awareness, that's off. That's definitely narcissistic and veering into something darker. That That's not so a friendship. So how would my friend have seen his true colors he without going have. through that? He might not have. He may not have. So we all could be friends with a narcissist and are. not even know it. We all are. We all are. I can, I can think about my group of friends. There's friends I've left. Under pressure, something happened. We had an interchange. I was like, damn, I'm, no. I mean, I don't, like, I, I do mm -hmm, not keep mm -hmm, folks mm -hmm. like that around. And that was the end of it. I was, I was done. It doesn't need to be some big, dramatic breakup conversation. We don't break up with friends, do right. we? There's no. not like, 
we need to talk. Yeah. Did you meet me at that it's coffee you, shop on the me. corner? Uh -huh. No, we just, we, there's a very ghosty feel to ending friendships. You just sort of like, one day you just stop texting yeah. them, calling it's them. the original unless ghosting. They, yes, but unless they live near you and you have a rhythm, that's harder. Yeah. It's when you say, you know, I'm too busy. I can't get together. I can't get together. I can't get together. Maybe the friend will notice. Maybe they won't. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it can sort of die on the vine right. sort of thing. Right. But I do think friendships are often quite superficial. They can be, you know, the friend you do just occasionally go out to dinner with, or they're your rock climbing buddy, right. or they're your, I like to see horror films with you friend, or it may be that kind of thing. Right. So you, when the rubber meets the road and you might think they are a friend because we've done all this stuff together, and then you open up or you make a significant lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. You know, your friend mm -hmm. becoming sober. Mm -hmm. You decide that you're no longer going to do the I can stay out till three in the morning lifestyle anymore. Mm -hmm. Or you decide to get a nine to five job. Those people, those people who likely viewed you as a convenience and that's why they were your friend. Like, I don't I don't do nine to five friends kind mm -hmm. of thing. It, it, it can percolate at a certain point in time. And listen, you can always keep a few narcissistic friends up on the top shelf there. They're sort of fun to have at parties. You know, like they yeah. definitely keep the conversation lively and grandiose. You just got to remember to put them back in the cupboard when you're done. Right. And you shouldn't be surprised yeah. when you go to them with a real issue and they yeah. dismiss it. Understand their limitations. And that's why I'm saying that, in fact, friendships may be the one form of relationship where you might actually be able to weather the narcissism storm. You just have to be aware this person is going to be a go to for nothing more than happy hour. Right. Which is OK. Which is fine. I love that, actually. Yeah, that, and, yeah. and the reason I say I love that is because it really brings that radical upset, acceptance yeah. in, a, in a very practiced yes, way. Yes. I'm going to go have drinks yeah. with this person, but if I get right. really sick or my, you know, something terrible happens, I know I'm not going to go there. The only exception to this, to this though, mm -hmm. is if we're dealing with a friend who's more of a malignant narcissist. Mm -hmm. So now this is somebody who's trying to hustle you for money. Yeah. Explain well, what maybe. a malignant so narcissist is. So a malignant narcissist is narciss the usual classical narcissism mm -hmm. with the lack of uh, empathy, entitlement, grandiosity, all the usual stuff. But we add a more manipulative, exploitative, coercive, controlling overlay to that. Mm -hmm. These are the, to me, the malignant narcissist is the last stop on the train before we get to psychopathy. Mm -hmm. So there's something a bit more menacing, manipulative. They'll, they'll, they may bring you into a bad investment. Mm -hmm. They may try to take money, borrow more money from you than you should be really giving out. Mm -hmm. They may be telling lies about you. They may use you for something, for a connection, and that might burn a bridge for you. Mm -hmm. um, they may take advantage of you in a way that is not healthy or may even put you at risk, it's, it's darker. That friendship is never healthy, happy hour or not. Mm -hmm. So those friendships really you, you do good to sort of get out of because, I mean, I can't tell you how many people I've been told about who got bilked of tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars by a friend who was trying to bring them in on a deal and they fell for it. These are like the Bernie Madoffs of the world. Yeah, but you know, small time, small ti time. tiny Bernies, right, but right, definitely right. like people who have no problem hustling a friend and you would have probably been much more guarded if someone brought this to you, but because it was your so-called friend, right. you actually listened to the pitch. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. So while you're saying this in my head, I'm divvying up my friends into real friends and other friends. Mm -hmm. And those other friends are the ones that Maybe they're a narcissist, maybe I'll never know, yeah. but they serve that role and it's not detrimental to my life. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's and it's also the kind of thing where you may only have limited tolerance for it. Mm -hmm. When your time becomes more precious, you may be less willing to spend time with these maybe more benign narcissistic, but nonetheless narcissistic friends. You might feel like, you know what, I get one night out a month, I got kids, I'm not sure that this is the person I want to give it to you. But if you have a party, a big barbecue where there's a hundred people coming, a yeah. few narcissists yeah. around, who cares? Right. Thank you, Dr. Romani. Well, in our next and final session, we will be talking about what you can do when your boss is a narcissist. Thanks for watching. Check out the links below for more information on how to access this full series and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new mental health videos every week. Did you like what you heard in this video? If you want to ask a MedCircle doctor a question directly, you can learn how by visiting the links in the description below.